A stolen tractor is used to break into a local business and for the getaway. A Bakersfield chase on foot brings out a canine and chopper. And canceling credit cards sounds like a good idea, but you may want to think again. This is 17 News at Noon. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Alex Fisher. We begin with the Department of Homeland Security investigation in Bakersfield this morning. Details are limited at this time, but here's what we know so far. Federal officials would not say what happened or where the investigation took place. However, they did say Homeland Security investigators were in the Bakersfield area performing what they call law enforcement actions. HSI is the largest investigative branch within the Department of Homeland Security. It uses its authority to investigate all types of cross-border criminal activity. Officials say they will not provide any more details about this morning's investigation at this time, but say there is no threat to public safety. At least one man is in custody after an apparent chase in East Bakersfield. It all happened just after 1 o'clock this morning on La Costa Court, just off Auburn Street. That's just a few blocks away from Henry Eisler Elementary. You can see Kern County Sheriff's deputies take a man into custody. It appears they use a chopper to help track the man down. And our photojournalist on the scene says at least one police dog was helping with the search. We heard reports this all started as a foot chase on Highway 178 and reached, we reached out to KCSO for more information, but we're still waiting to hear back and we'll bring you an update as soon as we have more information. Meantime, Bakersfield police are investigating a shooting in central Bakersfield that likely involved a BB or pellet gun. Police say it happened just after 11 o'clock last night on Q Street, about a block away from Memorial Hospital. BPD is looking into the possibility the shooting happened during some sort of purchase or transaction. One person was hurt. Officers say witnesses at the scene were not cooperating. The suspect is described as a black man in his 30s wearing all black clothes and weighing about 170 pounds. A local student was arrested after making threatening posts on social media of a shooting. The student from Button Willow was arrested yesterday morning for the threats. Although the sheriff's office says no guns were found inside the home, KCSO did not specify which school the student threatened but did say there will be an additional law enforcement presence on campus today and at tonight's graduation. Thousands of high school seniors are turning their tassels this week as they officially become graduates. East High School's uh, graduation was yesterday. Here's a look at the packed house. We spoke with a few grads about their big day. Jose Carrillo told us he's feeling proud and excited. Uh, it's a really exciting time, feeling accomplished, you know, finally one of the biggest milestones in our lifetimes, but you're not going to go on to accomplish more. And Shafter, Ridgeview, West, South, and Miramonte High Schools had graduations as well last night. Meantime, we've posted a list of all graduations in the Kern High School District and their ceremonies tonight and tomorrow. You can find that on our website, kget.com. Meantime, 46 Wasco Union High School seniors will graduate tonight with more than a high school diploma. They'll also receive their associate's degree from Bakersfield College. It's all thanks to the district's partnership between the school, BC, and the wonderful company. 39 of those students will continue with higher education. Tonight's higher, uh, high school graduation at Wasco High will be at 7 p.m. on the football field. Congratulations to all those students. The Special Olympic Flame of Hope made its way through Kern County this morning for the law enforcement torch run. This was the final leg for the Special Olympics of Southern California. Officers ran from Mercy Hospital to the Liberty Bell in downtown Bakersfield. Special Olympics Kern County is one of nine regional programs of SOSC and offers year-round sports, training, and competitions for more than 850 athletes. Getting all the athletes in and just working them out and teaching them that there's more to sports and Special Olympics than just competing. The Special Olympics Southern California is happening June 8th and 9th at Cal State, Cal State Long Beach. Will Congress impeach President Trump? They're talking about it again after a surprise announcement by Robert Mueller yesterday, the man behind the Russ investigation. Tracy Potts has more from Capitol Hill. President Trump this morning lashing out at former special counsel Robert Mueller. I think he is a total conflicted person. I think Mueller 
is a true never trumper. And on evidence of obstruction that resulted in no indictment. They got nothing. It's pretty amazing. Russia did not help me get elected. You know who got me elected? You know who got me elected? I got me elected. Mueller made it clear the Justice Department does not allow him to prosecute President Trump. Charging the president with a crime was therefore not an option we could consider. Yet he also can't clear the president on obstruction of justice. If we had had confidence that the president clearly did not commit a crime, we would have said so. We did not. Bottom line, it's up to Congress. More than 40 Democrats and one Republican, Michigan's Justin Amash, are calling for impeachment. It would start with Congressman Jerry Nadler's Judiciary Committee. All options are on the table and nothing should be ruled out. But House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is pumping the brakes on impeachment. Many constituents want to impeach the president. But we want to do what is right and what gets results. The White House says Mueller's statement means case closed. Congress needs to move on. If Bob Mueller had determined that there was a crime, he would have had a moral obligation to report it. He didn't. He says he couldn't. And Democrats are divided on what to do next. Tracy Potts, NBC News, Washington. Severe weather is still pummeling the nation with tornadoes, heavy rain, and massive flooding. There have been report, or tornadoes reported every day for the last two weeks, and the already catastrophic flooding is getting even worse, especially in Oklahoma. NBC's Kristen Dahlgren has more. This is a dangerous situation. This morning, new evacuations in Oklahoma. You are in a possible flood area. We recommend that you evacuate. Residents in Sand Springs being urged to leave. Concerns growing that the strain levees can't keep up with the rising floodwaters. In other neighborhoods, it's already too late. And you can see just what people here are dealing with, what used to be the street, now a river. It's being called a slow motion disaster. There's now flooding in more than a dozen states, stretching from Louisiana to South Dakota. Parts of the Mississippi River seeing its longest sustained flooding in nearly a century. Outside Little Rock, the Arkansas River has topped two levees. Hundreds of thousands of acres of farmland are completely underwater. Bragg's Oklahoma is now an island with water on all sides. There is no way in and no way out except for evacuation missions by the National Guard. And the tornadoes haven't stopped either. This video shows a tornado in Canton, Texas, tearing across the landscape. Back in Oklahoma, a tour of the evacuated flood zone. This has got to be so disheartening to the people that are just trying to get back in their homes to salvage stuff. Kristen Dahlgren, NBC News. Hi, I'm Scott with Aspire. I want to personally thank Kern County for trusting Aspire with being a part of your family's recovery. At Aspire Counseling Services, we take this opportunity very seriously and would be honored for your continued support. Call us today. Welcome back. Well, it may seem like a good idea to cancel a credit card. There are some negative impacts you may not be aware of. Bankrate.com says more than 60% of cardholders have canceled at least one credit card to pay off debt or help boost credit scores. But that might not be helping in the way cardholders are expecting. Financial experts recommend keeping old accounts open to boost your credit score. Credit scoring systems favor long-standing accounts and more available credit. If you're paying an annual fee for a credit to you, uh, for a card you aren't using, ask the company to downgrade you to a card that doesn't charge an annual fee. A card change like that will not impact your credit score because it maintains the account history and the credit line. Uber is now holding both drivers and riders accountable for their behavior. The rideshare company says customers in the U.S. and Canada could lose access if they develop a significantly below average rating. The move is part of a new education campaign to promote Uber's community guidelines with a focus on safety. Uber says riders will receive tips and several opportunities to improve their scores prior to losing access. While average driver ratings vary by city, the company hasn't disclosed exactly what rating will lead to a rider getting deactivated. Uber expects only a small number of riders to be impacted by ratings-based deactivations. Well, wedding season is gearing up, and there's a new study out today about the hottest trends for wedding gifts, and many don't even require wrapping paper. Liz McLaughlin has more. Weddings are getting pricier for the couple and the guests. 
The average wedding registry is valued just under $5,000. And more couples are asking for cash. According to a study from wedding planning website The Knot, cash registries have gone up year over year and now bring in about $1,800 for the average wedding. When guests see what you're actually going to spend the money on, they're more likely to click the button and give you the cash. Honeymoon funds are the most popular, but couples are earmarking this money for just about anything, including a down payment on a home, gym memberships, even fertility treatments. And more couples are using their special day to give back by adding the option to donate to charity in lieu of a gift. Most couples choose a charity registry that means something to them. Though cash registries are on the rise, 97 percent still have a retail registry with tangible items. But couples are moving beyond the traditional gifts of bed sheets and blenders. A lot of couples are getting married later in life, so they already have a lot of the stuff that they need to set up a home. Increasingly, registries are including more smart home devices or items personalized to reflect their interests, such as outdoor equipment. We're seeing couples really curate their registries to reflect who they are as people. And the experiences they want to share long after they tie the knot. Liz McLaughlin, NBC News. Hi, I'm Scott with Aspire. I want to personally thank Kern County for trusting Aspire with being a part of your family's recovery. At Aspire Counseling Services, we take this opportunity very seriously and would be honored for your continued support. Call us today.